In Creole Parametric, a circular reference occurs when one object is both the parent and the child of another object. Let's take a look at a, another way to repair one. And in this situation, I will be able to show you the edit references command. So upon regeneration of the model, I get a little warning down here in the notification center. If I click on it, it tells me that we have one circular reference in this assembly. Also, if you take a look at the top node in the model tree, we have a little yellow triangle, which gives us the same information. To figure out where the circular reference is, I will go to the reference viewer, which you can get to from the model tab. You can also access the reference viewer from the tools tab. You can also get to it by right clicking on an object in the model tree and then going to information and reference viewer. And since I had the motor assembly selected, it's telling me, oh, there's a missing model, probably something that I don't have in session. To figure out where the circular reference is, you will go to the paths tab and you can click on find circular paths to make sure it's updated. Here we can see that we have one circular path and I can see, okay, it's got protrusion ID 23 in something. I don't know. Let's make this a little wider so we can see the entire name. Protrusion ID 23 in a part called Kickstarter arm. And then I see that it looks like the circular reference is going to this component. If we click on the actual opposite facing arrows, it'll go right to more information about the circular reference. So I can see that it's pretty much between this component and this protrusion. Those are the only things indicated by the circular reference. So let's try to figure out where this Kickstarter arm part is. Let me close out of here. And okay, here I see a Kickstarter assembly. Let's see if we open that up in its own separate window. And wow, here we have this assembly with just two parts in it. And if I regenerate, yeah, here we can see that we have a circular reference. Before I investigate in here, I want to take a look and see how this assembly is located. If I expand the little junction next to the object in the model tree, I can then expand the placement. So it looks like this was assembled with some constraints. Let's edit definition just to figure out a little bit more. All right, looks like there was a coincident constraint with some cylindrical surfaces. Let me go to the placement tab. There's also a distance constraint between some flat surfaces. That's kind of weird. I would have expected it to be assembled directly to some geometry. And there's also this allow assumptions that takes care of the rotation angle. What I'm gaining from this is that the subassembly was assembled with constraints to real geometry. I just want to see if, you know, maybe they use the default constraint and there's some data sharing features later on. But again, at this point, I'm just educating myself on how the subassembly was placed. Let's go back to the subassemblies window. And let's see, we have the Kickstarter mount part. Let me expand it. Okay, looks like there's some read-only features in here. Let me go to placement. All right, there's a coincident constraint. Okay, looks like they used a coincident constraint to the default coordinate system. Personally, I would prefer a default constraint as opposed to assembling to the default coordinate system. But, oh well. And all the features are set to read only to save on regeneration time. Let's get rid of that. Let's click on the part in the model tree and then open it up. And then I can right click on the read only features folder and then choose clear all read only. And by the way, when I select on the folder, you can see all the other stuff that is highlighting in here. Let me clear that. And I see, okay, there's a copy geometry feature here. So it looks like they must be using some references from something. Furthermore, if I right click on the top node in the model tree, I can once again do information reference viewer and see that. All right, so let's see. It's got some references from this gearbox links part. And all right, 
Yeah, it's assembled probably to use as that datum plane for some reason or whatever. But again, I'm just, you know, educating myself about this particular component. Uh, let's take a look at that copy geometry feature. What is it used for? So if I right click on it and then go to information and reference viewer. All right, it looks like this copy geometry feature is used to create an axis called A1. If I take a look at it in the model tree, it is just right below the copy geometry feature. And also it is used by protrusion ID 145. If I expand this in here, I can see that, okay, it's got a couple surfaces that are being used. So it looks like a cylindrical surface there and a flat surface over there. All right, really, you know, don't know much at this part. Again, I'm just doing an investigation. Let's go back to the subassembly. And here we have the second part in the assembly. And by the way, I find this is always weird when you have an assembly with just two parts and you have a circular reference. Here's the Kickstarter arm part. Again, I'm gonna take a look at the placement folder to see how it was assembled. And it looks like it was assembled with constraints. So we have some cylindrical surfaces there. Looks like we have some flat planar surfaces there and also a parallel constraint there. So assembled with geometry, I would not expect to have external references between the arm and the mount, but let's take a look. I can right click on here and then information reference viewer. And all right, so the Kickstarter arm part does have a few references between this component and the mount part, maybe how it was assembled, I don't know. But anyhow, let's start taking care of stuff. The first thing that's leaping out to me is this copy geometry feature and this axis that's being used. Let's go to that part in its own separate window. And so I know from taking a look at the copy geometry feature, if I go to information, reference viewer, here we see the copy geometry feature has two children, the axis and protrusion ID 145. Let's figure out how protrusion ID 145 was created. And also if I'm taking a look at the geometry, it's relatively simple here. You know, I'm not seeing anything overly complicated that would probably necessitate external references. But again, I'm gonna use edit definition I can see, okay, it's pretty basic shape. You know, it looks like a couple circles or like an arc, a bunch of straight lines. You know, nothing out of the ordinary. Let's go to the placement tab. Okay, it uses an internal sketch. Let's click on the edit button. And again, I can see, you know, relatively simple geometry. I'm not seeing anything in here that is screaming out to have external references. Let's go to sketch setup. So I can see that it was sketched on some plane called DTM1, which doesn't appear in the model tree. So it looks like the sketch plane is an external reference. I don't know why it's using that particular sketch plane, especially since this subassembly was assembled using geometry. There's really no need to have uh, DTM1 and DTM2. I have no idea what those planes are are in this particular model. Let's cancel out of the sketch setup and go to sketch references. And it's got one sketch reference, which is an axis. So it's an axis to locate this. But again, it's really unnecessary because it's just using an axis, which you're assembling this component using geometry. Why do you need an external reference to an axis? That does not make sense. What I wanna do is change this to use local references. Let's close out of here, let's cancel. So again, external references are the number one cause of getting these circular references. And again, if this component is assembled using geometry, essentially using a default constraint, using a default coordinate system, there's really no need for those external references. Let's turn on our plane display and let's turn on our axis display. So now I can see, okay, there's the A1 axis that was created from the copy geometry feature. 
I want to use a different axis instead, maybe an axis at the intersection of a couple of planes here. Let's create an axis at the intersection of this plane. Hold down the control key, select that plane there. Then from the mini toolbar, I can create an axis. Here it is down at the bottom of the model tree. Let's rename it main axis. Also, I am going to drag it so that it appears as high in the model tree as possible after my default datum planes. And so now I can say, hey, let's take this model and change it so that instead of using the axis and the copy geometry feature, I want this protrusion to use local references. To do that, I will use the edit references command. Edit references is a great way of changing the parents and children of a feature. And so I can see, okay, it's using some surface here in the model, some surface from a copy geometry. Let's use maybe this local datum plane instead, maintain the same orientation. Instead of using the A1 axis, let's use this one. And by the way, when you're using edit references, right now it's listing all the original references, in other words, the original parents of this particular feature. If we go to roll to, it'll go to essentially that where that part is or where that feature is in the model tree. And right now we're not seeing any geometry. Let's go to, let's see, instead of using the A1 axis, let's pick our main axis that we created. And here it's listing ZSB Oban. Some plane over here, let's use this plane instead. And let's use the model tree to select body one out of there. Let's click on the preview button. And there we can see how the feature would be located. That looks good. Let's click the OK button. So in that way, we changed this particular feature to use all local references. Let's see if we can delete the axis now. Yep, click the OK button, it'll be deleted. Let's see if we can delete the copy geometry feature. Because again, we're not really using the copy geometry for anything since the component is assembled with constraints. And so we can say, yep, let's click the OK button. And so that way we should now have no external references in this particular part. Let's close it and go back to the subassembly. Parts are located in the wrong place. Let's hit regenerate. And because the Kickstarter arm was assembled with geometry, it automatically updated its location. Let's go back to the Kickstarter mount part itself just to be clean. I'm going to edit definition of this component. And instead of using a coincident constraint with coordinate systems, let's delete that and change that to a default constraint. Again, it's not really going to fix anything in here. It's just a little cleaner in my opinion. Let's hit regenerate. And we still have an external, re or excuse me, a circular reference, one circular reference. So again, it's really weird that you have such a simple assembly, relatively simple geometry, and we have circular references. Let's continue our investigation. So let's go to the paths tab, circular path one. So again, it's that protrusion ID 23 in the Kickstarter arm. I really should have jumped to that first, but I wanted to clean up some other stuff with those external references. So let's go to Kickstarter arm, open it in its own separate window. Once again, we will right click on the read only features folder, clear all read only. And was that protrusion ID 23 Let's edit definition to see how this was created. All right, so I can see that it's a sketch that was extruded, a depth. Kind of weird that I don't have a preview of the geometry. Let's go to the placement tab. It's got an internal section. Let's hit the edit button. And let's go to the sketch setup. So let's see, this was sketched on a surface in the Kickstarter mount part, it's using as a sketch plane a surface from a different part. That is odd because, again, this component was assembled with constraints. Why would you use a sketch plane from a different part? Let's cancel out of here. Let's go to our sketch references. And 
it's using a couple of edges from the Kickstarter mount part. Edges out in space over here, edge out in space over there. It just doesn't make any sense why it's using those edges if it's just trying to maybe drive a diameter in here. There, there are better ways to do that. So, again, it's just kind of some unnecessary external references. Let's close out of here, cancel out of there, cancel out of here. Let's get rid of those sketch references entirely. Let's go to edit definition of the protrusion. Let's go to the placement tab and then edit. And let's go to the references. Again, it only uses those two edges as references. Let's delete and delete. Let's go to a sketch orientation. And instead, instead for sketch references, let's use some of our default datums. We'll hit the solve button. Let me turn off my plane display. And we have some dimensions over here. I'm just gonna change those to zero, just locate it sort of at the intersection of my sketch references. Everything else looks good. Let's take this dimension and make it strong. Just hit the enter key. So that's good. So that way now we just have uh, those external references no longer in the sketch. Let's hit the check mark and the check mark. And now we can use edit references to make sure that we're only using local references for this protrusion. I will select it and let's go to edit references. And once again, it's using that surface over there. And let's use this surface and that surface and that surface. That one's all good. Let's click the OK button. And so I'll reposition the component Let's go back to the assembly. Let's hit the regenerate button. And again, because we were using geometry for the constraints, everything updates in the correct location in here. And we no longer have a circular reference. We just got rid of some unnecessary external references that were driving this model. And that took care of the problem. Let's go back to a next higher level assembly. And once again, if we go to the model tab and regenerate, we no longer have an indication in the model tree or the notification center of having a circular reference. So again, if you have unnecessary external references, just clean it up and use local references instead to take care of those problems. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.